All right, everyone. Professor Sackett Taylor here with the second part of the video lecture series on chapter nine about the decisions of a firm operating in a competitive market setting. So last time we established that a firm has a profit maximizing rule. That is, they want to produce a level of output where that very last unit of output breaks even. This is the place where marginal revenue equals marginal costs. Now we're gonna look at the other decisions a firm might have to make in the short run. Firms can't always be making a profit. And just because you're not making a profit in the short run doesn't always mean that you should go out of business. There is a decision though, to do what's called shutdown. Shutdown is a decision that a firm makes to stop producing output and temporarily, and they would only do this if they cannot cover their variable costs. Remember, variable costs are costs that vary with output. So they are costs associated with your inputs, essentially, right? If you want to produce more output, you got to put in more inputs. The costs associated with those inputs are therefore also associated with your output. You can think of things like wages for your workers or the cost of the materials that you need to actually make your product. So if you can't cover your variable costs, you might choose to shut down temporarily and choose to produce a quantity of zero. Shutting down is not the same as going out of business. That's a long run decision and that requires exiting the industry. That's a separate decision to exit. And we're gonna talk about that in, the, in a minute. So here, let's look at our graph. Again, I wanna emphasize the orange check shaped marginal cost curve. Remember at first, as we begin to produce more output, our inputs become more efficient and our marginal cost, the cost of producing each additional unit of output at first goes down, then diminishing marginal product kicks in. We've got a little bit of congestion, right? That we have, um, workers or machines that as we add them, they begin to produce a smaller and smaller amount over time. And this is what accounts for our upward sloping marginal cost curve after that we round the bend of that check mark. Then we've got average total cost and average variable cost. Because remember, our total cost is the sum of variable and fixed. So the same rule holds for averages. The average total cost is the sum of average variable and average fixed. So the shutdown de decision is about meeting your, your variable costs. If you cannot meet your variable costs, then you're not going to be able to continue producing output. And so you're gonna to have to temporarily halt production. This would happen in the red zone of this graph where you're um, so, because you're, we're always operating on our marginal cost curve, right? Remember that we're always looking for the point where price or marginal revenue intersects with marginal cost. That's profit maximizing. So, you always first and foremost want to choose a quantity of output that is profit maximizing for you. However, sometimes even your profit maximizing point doesn't cover your variable costs. So if your profit maximizing point intersects this, the marginal cost curve anywhere below this point here where marginal cost intersects average variable costs, right? You're not gonna be able to cover your variable costs in this red zone. And so if you're operating in this red zone, the right decision as a, from, for the firm is to shut down temporarily. If you can cover your variable costs, but not all of your fixed costs, right? So that would be where you're in the yellow zone. So you're operating, we're in a place where you are, your, your revenue is below your average total cost, but above your average variable cost. So what this means is I can cover my variable costs, but I don't quite cover all of my fixed costs. This is the yellow zone. This would be a situation where you actually should continue operating, although you're temporarily going to be taking losses. 
The place we all want to be is the place where we can cover all of our costs, right? At minimum, that would be the place where the average total cost curve intersects with the marginal cost curve. Any point there or above means that you're bringing in enough money to cover all of your costs, both variable and fixed. If you're above that point, it means you're bringing in more money than what your cost structure is. This is profit. So the green zone is the profitable area and where we aim to be. So if we want to look at these as kind of rules, conditions for understanding when we should operate and when we should shut down, we could use the following inequalities. First, we know that if the price that we can sell our product for is greater than the per unit average total cost, then I'm going to be making a positive profit. However, if my price that I can sell my product for falls somewhere between average total cost and average variable cost, it means I can cover my variable costs, but not all of my fixed costs. And I should keep operating, but I will take temporary losses. Unfortunately, if the price you sell your product for falls below your average variable costs, then you're not even being, you're not able to cover the cost of producing that output. And you'll have to temporarily shut down and produce nothing. So what does this look like if we were to think about this in terms of supply and demand? Well, since we are profit maximizing, we are always looking for the point on the marginal cost curve that represents the place or the quantity where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. So that means that no matter what you're doing, you're living on that marginal cost curve, right? You're somewhere on that, that, that orange curve. In the short run, we know that anywhere in the red zone represents shutdown. So you're not producing anything. So otherwise you're not supplying anything to the market. But we know that in the yellow zone, you will continue operating, although at a loss. And in the green zone, you'll continue operating at a profit. So we can look at the marginal cost curve in the yellow and the green zone as being equivalent to our upward sloping short run supply curve. Essentially, this marginal cost curve is going to tell us the quantity of output that we're able to supply to the market as long as we are not in shutdown. That is, as long as we're operating. In the long run, remember the difference between the short run and the long run is that in the short run, we have some costs that are fixed, right? That we cannot change. But if you give it enough time, if you let enough business cycles happen, you have a lot more flexibility in your decision making. And so we consider, we make an assumption in this model that in the long run, nothing is fixed, everything is variable. So now we don't have a variable cost curve and a fixed cost curve. We just have a total cost curve because your total cost is your variable cost. Everything is variable. So we get rid of one of the curves. And now we just have a marginal cost and an average total cost curve. So in the long run, right, in the long run, you don't want to operate at a loss. That's not sustainable. So that, that yellow portion goes away, right? There is no such thing as operating a loss in the long run. In the long run, you're either going to exit or you're going to stay. In the long run, the reason to exit would be if you cannot cover your costs over several business cycles, right? You can't figure out your different input mix or sourcing things from different places or changing the number of workers you have. You've tried everything. You've changed all these things and you just can't cover your costs. That's red zone. That would mean that you should probably exit the industry because you're always gonna be operating at a loss. In order to stay in the industry, you need to be in the green zone, the place where you're operating on your marginal cost curve above average total costs, meaning that you can cover the cost of all of your production inputs. So red zone is exit, green zone is stay. But beyond that, if there are any people in the green zone, then, you know, other, other people who are also like entrepreneurs or interested in this industry may say, oh, there are some businesses here that are making a positive profit. If they can make a positive profit, I could too. And so when there are businesses operating in the green zone, we have what we call market entry. That is other firms will want to come into the industry seeking those same profits. 
So here in the long run, you essentially just have one rule. If your price that you sell your product for can cover your average total cost, you're making a profit. If your price that you sell your product for doesn't cover your total co average total cost, you got to shut down. The shutdown in the long run means exit. One of the things that needs to be named here, and which is a behavioral or psychological component where economics and psychology intersect, it has to do with sunk costs and what we call the sunk cost fallacy. A sunk cost is a cost that's unrecoverable. It's money you would never be able to get back that you've already incurred as a result of past decisions, right? It's like money that's already exited that you have no hope of retrieving. The sunk cost fallacy is a psychological bias that we have where we tend to take into account sunk costs when making new decisions at the margin. This is a fallacy or a problem because you shouldn't be taking into account costs that you can't retrieve if they're already gone. You've really only got to look forward to what's happening on the margin. Here's an example. You are at a food court in a mall. I don't remember last time I've been to a food court in the mall. Thanks, COVID. But you're waiting in a really long line with your friend for a specific food item. And there's another place in the food court that has no line and your friend says well we might as well stay here because we've already been waiting 15 minutes technically those 15 minutes are sunk right you've already spent them it's already cost you've incurred and you can never get that time back so your decision to stay in line or move really shouldn't have to do with how long you've already been there so since you can't get those 15 minutes back it's sunk and you'd be better off you know getting out of line and going to an empty restaurant if you want that food more. But, you know, the 15 minutes that you've already spent shouldn't prevent you from switching. There's one thing here we have to be careful of, and that's where we think about the marginal benefit, like how much happiness or satisfaction we get from the transaction. So thinking about like, ooh, does this one restaurant have much better food than the other? If one has really, really good food and you know that that benefit is going to be much greater then here, we really want to be weighing marginal benefit versus marginal cost. So you want to say, how good is this food and how much do I want it? And what would be the additional cost going forward of continuing to stay in the line? If the benefit exceeds the cost, you should stay in the line. If the benefit doesn't exceed the cost, then you should switch. But still, this is a forward thinking decision. It's not taking into account the 15 minutes you've already lost because it's sunk and you'll never get it back. So let's practice what we know. Steve runs a competitive sandwich shop. Right now, he's producing at an output level where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, meaning money coming in from one more unit exceeds the money going out from producing that unit. So if Steve wants to make more profit, what should he do? Here we know that if we haven't broken even yet, there's still profit to be had. If your marginal revenue is greater than your marginal cost, you know that you could actually produce one more unit and still um, not make a loss. And so it's worth continuing to produce more output in this situation. Let's suppose that a competitive firm is faced with a price in the short run that's between average variable and average total costs, right? So it's above average variable, you can cover your variable costs, but it's below average total, meaning there's some fixed costs you can't cover. What should this firm do? This is the rule we wanna follow. Here, we should continue to produce and produce at the profit maximizing point. The profit maximizing point is marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Since you're between the average variable and average total cost curve, this means that you'll be operating at a slight loss, but this is only in the short run. By changing the way you use your inputs or the way that you uh, approach your production process, you may be able to recoup those losses and return to positive profits in the long run, but you should not shut down as long as you can cover your variable costs. A competitive firm will shut down and produce zero output if what is true well if price is below the very lowest point on our average variable cost curve that would mean that i can't even cover my lowest variable cost that would be a reason for shutdown so when price falls into that red zone 
That's the shutdown decision in the short run. It's a temporary decision to produce zero output. All right. This was a much shorter video than the first one, but it had a lot of graphs in it. So I really suggest going back and rewinding, pausing the video and taking some time with these graphs. It's helpful to draw the graphs yourself. You get that kind of body memory from actual drawing and labeling them with words that make sense to you. Turn these concepts into a story, into a narrative that feels familiar or relevant to your life. And you're more likely to remember the graph. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.